So, with the big news that's trending with this team lately, I'm just going to be honest with y'all. Last week versus the Browns, that was a pyrrhic victory. Yeah, we got the win, but it was ultra ugly. And on top of that, we're going to be losing one of our best players. Of course, Devontae Adams has requested a trade. I'm not surprised. I think he should get while the getting is good, and he has a he has a chance at a Hall of Fame career. He should go uh, experience that and get some success. So I'm not mad at that. Uh, of course, we did get the win against the Browns, 20 to 16, to improve to two and two on the year, middle of the road. And of course, the Browns dropped to one and three. Are they going anywhere? No, not really. Let's take a look at the stats, though. You know, because that's how we do here. Uh, Deshaun Watson, of course, under center, he went 30, 24, 32, 176 yards. He would throw a touchdown. He would throw a pick. Pretty much Gardner Minshew numbers, well, at least through the first couple of weeks, because Gardner Minshew didn't do shit last week. Four. 14 to 24, 130 yards. Again, nothing, no touchdowns, nothing to write home about. Again, we got the win, but uh, look at it, uh, no running game still to this, you know, to this very extent. Uh, we're hearing word of, you know, uh, Alexander Madison taking more of a, you know, role in the running game. Okay, great. He hasn't done much either. He scored a couple more touchdowns than Zamir White, but. Nothing really in terms of production, yardage-wise. And, you know, Zamir White, we were high on him going into the season. He's only been averaging about 2.9 yards a carry, about 77 yards on 50 carries. Not a good look right now. So, again, no running game to speak of. And, again, uh, the defense was solid, though. That that will be the takeaway here. Uh, they held, uh, you know, your boys uh, to, well, they held the Browns to just, you know, actually to under 250 yards. They would force, of course, uh, three sacks. So, it was a solid game defensively. But, again, nothing doing offensively, of course. Uh, you know, uh, Devontae Adams was out uh, this week with a hamstring injury. I don't know what his status is going for the rest of the season, particularly now that he's requesting a trade. Uh, we might not see too much more of him. And again, we already know the Jets are probably, you know, the number one team, the number one option for him. He can go back with Aaron Rodgers. Uh, I can't really think of any. I mean, there's probably a few teams that want to serve. There's quite a few teams. But the only thing that could, uh, the team that I could think of about right now, the top of my head, you know, with any traction would have to be uh, the Jets. Of course, I've, I've heard rumblings about the Steelers, but don't hold me to all that. The, the Jets are probably where it's at, to be honest with y'all. But again, you know, nothing to speak of offensively for the third, the fourth straight week. And again, this is this is indicative of this offense. I, I don't know why. Again, I, I keep going back to that quarterback room. We decided to go into this season with these two guys, and uh, we thought we were going to make a solid offense around them, and we have a solid running game that hasn't come to fruition. And again, now one of our best pieces is you know talking about you know hey he wants to trade now. So such is life. Uh, that's the Raiders report. Not too much to say here, uh, but let's move on to the rest of the scoreboard. All right now, so week five is officially upon us with some Thursday night football. We had an NFC matchup between the Falcons and the Buccaneers, and Atlanta will get the win in that one, 36-30, and both teams are tied at the top of the division at three and two apiece. Now for Tampa Bay, Baker Mayfield would have a solid game going 19-24 for 180 yards. He would throw three touchdown passes. Rashad White would help out on the ground with over 70 rushing yards, and then Mike Evans would be one of his top receivers with five catches, 62 yards, and also two touchdown catches. Now, the issue with Tampa was their defense. They gave up 555 total yards. Now, the story, the real story of the game, though, was our boy Kirk Cousins going 42 of 58 for 504 yards, four touchdowns, like and that. just one interception. Like yes, Kirk, I do like that. I like that. I like that, Kurt. Drake London would be his leading receiver. 12 catches, 154 yards, and a score. Darnell Moody would do his thing as well. Nine catches, 105 yards, and two touchdowns. Again, both teams give up a lot of points. You know, no real, nothing really to say about any team defensively, but... Tampa Bay did give up 555 yards, so that ain't good at all. Uh, so let's move on to some of the matchups that we're going to be looking out for this weekend. Uh, we have a lot of them, uh, some important ones, so let's get into those real quick. 
All right, so one of the matchups that I wanted to talk about is going to be the undefeated Vikings taking on the two and two New York Jets. Of course, uh, I think the biggest, well, this game here is going to be basically a story of matchups. For one, we have one of the top quarterbacks in the league, that being Sam Donald. I know. That's Sam Donald. I know, right? Ghost Sam Donald. I, I, I know. I, I, I can't believe it either. But anyways, he is one of the top quarterbacks in the league right now. He's leading the league in touchdown passes. What the fuck universe are we in? Anyways, he's also, I believe, a top five uh, pl uh, quarterback in terms of uh, rating. And he's also top ten, or at least close to the top ten, in terms of you know completion percentage. So, again, massive turnaround into this season going into week uh, uh, week five really solid again like i said comeback player of the year type uh potential but anyways he's going up against one of the uh one of the top passing defenses in new york who've only given up two passing touchdowns this uh season so far and that's despite having a very ugly week one uh versus the niners so that's going to be an interesting matchup there uh minnesota well actually both of these defenses are top five uh now minnesota is a great defense against the run they are actually second against the run They'll be going up against the one-two punch of Brees Hall and also Braylon Allen for the Jets, who, I, I'm not mistaken, have combined for about 500 yards. So that's going to be an interesting matchup there. So again, like I said, two strong defenses. I guess it's going to come down to what offense can break through and, and make some key plays. Uh, another matchup that I wanted to get into real quick is going to be my Raiders uh, taking on the Broncos. Both of these guys are 500 uh, believe it or not, and they're fighting to not be last place in their division. And the Raiders coming to this one, you know, I've talked so much about this team. Uh, we're, yeah, let's be honest, we're pretty much middle of the road in terms of scoring. Uh, we have no uh, running game to speak of. With Devontae Adams out, I think one of your top receivers, you know, he, sh he might have a breakout game. Uh, it would be uh, Brock Bowers. Uh, we are... You know, we are going up against a defense that's top three. They're really good. You know, what makes this game, you know, at least winnable for us or the only reason we have a chance in this one is because, you know, Bo Nix, despite my love for him, of course, he's a former duck. He's been struggling this year. I think his uh, quarterback rating is 49.5 and he's thrown uh, four interceptions. So we have a shot there again if we're able to generate those turnovers. Uh, but again, offensively, with no Devontae Adams, again, we haven't really established our running game. You know, it's going to be very difficult. And Denver already has a great defense against the run as well. So, you know, it's going to be tough sledding. Uh, but again, I think we have a chance of what we can do defensively. However, I do have some bad news, y'all, Raider Nation. Max Crosby is going to be out. So that's going to suck. That's going to That could hold us back defensively. You know, there's, you know, again, uh, I, I feel like this could be a winnable game, but I said this about this, the, the Carolina uh, the Carolina matchup, and this team is so hard to read right now. So, like I said, I gotta I gotta watch it play out. To be honest with you, moving on, I got one last matchup. I got an NFC West matchup: Niners taking on the Cardinals. The Cardinals are one and three. I believe the Niners, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they're 500 right now at two and two. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, they are two and two, so they're 500. You know, the Niners, of course, normally on paper, they're gonna be your favorite, but they're missing a lot of players. If I'm not mistaken, they're missing, well, there's 11 players in total that are either questionable or, you know, not gonna play at all. We got George Kittle on that list. Uh, he's dealing with a rib issue. We have Fred Warner. He's, I think he's definitely out with an ankle injury. Even their starter safety, uh, Hufanga, I believe he's going to, well, he's been limited in practice. That could mean, you know, that could, he could still end up playing. Maybe they're just, you know, resting him a little bit. But he has an ankle injury too, so there's a possibility he doesn't play. So at some point, again, they've been they've been making it work. Again, uh, we do know about CMC being out for an indefinite amount of time. 
the word on the street is he has tendonitis in both Achilles. What the fuck, bro? But it's all bad. It's gnarly. He's going to be out for a while. But Jordan Mason, uh, you know, has, you know, made, you know, made things work, you know, and, and, and you know, come through in a clutch for them. So, but again, at some point, these injuries are going to rack up. With that being said, they do, they do got their top receiving threats. And I think, you know, still on paper, I, going into it, I think the Niners just have the better matchups. However, uh, Kyler Murray, he's been actually pretty solid this year. Six touchdowns, over 770 yards. Uh, he's going to be helped out, of course, by James Conner. At least, you know, for their sake, he's going to be helped out by James Conner. Over 230 yards for him. I believe three touchdowns. So, again, they can score. Uh, they've actually um, scored 50 points or more, at least 50 points for three straight games. So, this one could be a bomb burner. Uh, again, uh, you know, I mentioned, it, you know, in the Minnesota New York matchup, I talked about what offense can break through. In this one, it's going to, of course, be the opposite. Which defense can get off the field? Which defense is going to maybe generate a, a turnover or two? And which defense is not going to give up a whole lot of points? And, I, I, you know, again, despite the injuries, the Niners should be all right in this one. All right, y'all. I am going to talk about one, one headline that I want to get into, the only one that I felt. That was, you know, headline worthy enough, I guess. But let's go. Let's get into it. Now, the biggest story outside of players not wanting to conduct naked interviews. Seriously, what the fuck is wrong with the press? Give these motherfuckers a break. Let these motherfuckers change their clothes and go. Anyways, uh, we got Von Miller here being suspended by the league for four games. Now, what's being said? Although the NFL isn't saying it, is this is uh, stemming from an incident he had with his girlfriend. Uh, he's still with her. It was a domestic uh, violence situation. And if I'm not mistaken, it resulted in a third degree felony. Okay. Now, uh, the league didn't do anything back then, but they're deciding going into week five this season. Oh, let's, let's suspend this man. And this is already after... Apparently, he had his, you know, day in court or whatever. I don't know the ins and outs of that process, but I will say at least he was reprimanded. He had to turn himself in, so on and so forth. He is stating that he was under the belief that everything, you know, is was past him on the legal front, which it could have been. Again, I, I, I'm not privy to that part of it. You know, I'm, I'm more so kind of confused as to, as to why the league decided to suspend him now as opposed to not then maybe the situation took place after the season maybe at least the regular season maybe that's what the issue we're having is here but uh they wait until of course week five of this season to do this again they're really you know nondescript about it outside of how long he's going to be serving and of course you know you have Vaughn stating you know hey this is of course he felt like he was you know unjustly wrong of course he wanted to petition that he you know tried to go about the what you would call uh, the appeal that didn't work uh, my whole thing is though uh, you know this is all well it's hard to say it's you know it's alleged because you know there was calls that were made to law enforcement made by the girlfriend or made by somebody you know a friend or whoever somebody made a call and somebody made a statement of you know somebody was choking me now of course the woman the girlfriend would go along afterwards and say oh it was you know driven uh to this extreme or it was blown out of proportion well my question would be and this is not to make light of a domestic violence situation then why call the police if it wasn't that serious okay you see what i'm saying so it's all a sordid story and and the, and the thing is you know, alleged or not, the question I have, it really comes down to both of these fools because it seems like a very, no matter how you look at it, it seems like a very toxic relationship because this is not the first time he's been into it with this woman uh, one, one way or another. And again, you know, the, you know, all the extra details about their, you know, ins and outs, their relationship, who did what, who hit who, I don't know all that per se. I will just say this, you know, adults keep your hands off each other, you know, unless it's self-defense, you know, again, you stay, keep your hands off each other. But, you know, also, you know, when we look at our relationships, I would have to ask myself this, you know, when is enough enough? 
You know, when is the physical altercations, you know, when is that too much for somebody? When is, you know, the cost? And even if, okay, let's say, for instance, maybe she was in a moment. Maybe she she did call the police out of a sense of frustration or she didn't have to or whatever. Maybe it was whatever. At some point, if I'm Vaughn, why would I want to deal with that? Like she's she's probably the most amazing girl he's probably ever been with looks wise and and, and vice versa. Again, they, they both reflect what they obviously what they want which is again the problem here want and probably not need so you have two very toxic adults here that's what i see and uh, it's a love hate type of thing right there and it, it it could be that man's nfl downfall and and that's kind of weird you know to, to, to see that happen but again all i can say is again adults keep your hands off each other especially you men young men don't get into hitting your woman under circum under any circumstances self defense is one thing but again i'm not i'm not preaching hitting your woman in the domestic sense or even all that what he could be accused of doing what he actually could have done i don't condone that but at the same time no there is no but at the same time because i preach don't even deal with a relationship like that so again drama 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 now he can't play because of that so anyways y'all we're gonna wrap this up for today i hope uh you guys have an exciting day of football tomorrow i'll be trying to take a look out for my raiders hopefully we can get the dub uh we will be back here sometime next week i do want to get into some college football i haven't been able to just yet but i will of course we'll be coming back with week five of the nfl season uh and then i am working on a uh you know a movie review i got uh you know lethal weapon 2 in the works Working on something for Halloween as well. I'm trying to debate on which movie it should be, but we got that coming as well. So if you like what you saw today, please be sure to like and subscribe. All that good stuff. Share it. Leave comments, you know. And, uh, you know, follow me on Instagram as well. I'll be leaving that link in the description of the video. If anybody hasn't told you yet, I love you. Peace out. One love. And I'll holler at you guys later.